Aries, welcome to your in-depth reading for yours and theirs. I hope you're well. I hope you're fabulous. I thought of the collective last night, the Aries collective last night, so I watched the last uh, episode for season one of House of the Dragon. Loving it. Okay, that show is standing up in its own right independently of Game of Thrones. I think it's fantastic. Loved it. Loving it. And I thought about Aries because I said, you know what, wouldn't that be the very thing? Because the Targaryen house is represented by a three-headed dragon. And I said, isn't that a Targaryen? Aries, Aquarius, and Scorpio, if they were all rolled up into one, <laughs> that would be House Targaryen. <laughs> and that got me thinking, honey. So I'm making t-shirts, right, as we see. Mm -hmm. Yes, yours truly, this is mine. I hope you like it. We just opened our online merch store for Sassy Scorpion, all links below. I hope you find something that speaks to you. Thank you so much for your support. And it got me in mind of thinking, with kind of that Aries inspiration, a whole new line of t-shirts. I just came up with it last night. I cannot wait to develop that. It's gonna take some work on my part, but I cannot wait to see what that like. I hope you like it, because you very much inspired it. I was like, you know, even though I think uh, that house is a lot like Aries, Aquarius, and Scorpio if they were rolled into one person, I was like, you know what, a big chunk of that's Aries. I wanna do something special that kind of represents that that Aries energy, that oomph, you know? Anyway, I hope you are well. I hope you are fabulous. As you can see, we have made some background changes. I finally got the postcards up. If you sent me one, thank you so much. And that's not all. I am determined to rotate this background space every couple of months or so just to give the eye something different to look at, you know? And the next time I do, I will be showing off all you guys' creative works. Everyone who has sent me drawings and paintings and sketches over the years. So if you have done that, if you would like to share some of your artwork with me, thank you so much. Um, I just, it's a thrill to receive those things. I love art. Um, you know, as I often used to say when I practice my own arts, <sighs> art speaks with the soul cannot, you know? It's that raw form of perfect human expression that needs to come out of us. It doesn't have words. It doesn't always have words, you know? So I do love art and I cannot wait to change that up next, you guys. Oh, I love the fall, it's so invigorating, you know? It's a great time to make some changes. Shake things up a bit. What's going on, please, for Aries? So, given this is a collective reading, particularly with yours and theirs placement, is it imperative to take what resonates with you, which is not reverse energy as it applies? So even though I'm going to say things like yours, theirs, and shared, there's a good chance there will be some energy interchange, okay? You need to figure out who's who sometimes, yes. It's like, I know she said that's me, but... <laughs> yeah, those moments is what I'm talking about. Okay, show me Aries and their person, please. Show me Aries and their person. I cannot wait to design that t-shirt. I hope you like it. I'll let you know, of course, when it's done and developed. What's going on, please, for Aries? Show me Aries. Show me Aries and their person, please. Show me Aries and their person, please. What's going on? How many people are still recovering from your full moon? Somebody quoted me the other day, <laughs> you were right, uh, when the Aries and the full moon is out, people get all sorts of fucked up. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's why I thought about you last night. <laughs> Your side, the Ten of Swords, oh honey, the Nine of Wands, you're tired, the sun, you're so tired, you're so exhausted, you know, there's pain in you, there's possibly an ending here. You're exhausted of looking at it. You're exhausted of looking at the pain. You're exhausted of looking at the frustration. You're exhausted of dealing with it. Uh, it's looking like there's an ending just looming here. And you don't know if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Nine of Wands, it's very much like you. Should I continue to put up a resistance towards this? Or am I tired of fighting for it? You know, it takes a lot to wear an Aries out. It really does. And then you have the sun. You're telling me, whatever this is, I kind of want to get out of it and just be happy. So I don't know what that happiness looks like to you. It may or may not involve this person anymore. It depends. If they no longer meet the qualifications as you understand it for the sun, they may no longer be part of it. I need to see. For their side, we've got the Two of Pentacles, the Knights of Swords, the Two of Wands. They don't know if they're coming or going, and I mean that in a damn near literal sense. They don't know what to do. Um, they have not made up their mind about a decisive course of action when it comes to you and this connection. 
no doubt contributing to your sense of exhaustion. In other words, they're not making anything clear to you via the word or deed. Words or actions. Well, what are they doing, right? It's That's a lot of twos. I don't care for that. Two of wands, I grant you, is a bit more than up front of I need to make a decision. But there's this hangback energy of two of pentacles. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to take action. I don't know what to do. Uh, so that's not helping the situation. Shared energy is the Four of Wands relationship, Nine of Cups, personal pleasure, the High Priestess. Between the two of you, you shared some sort of relationship dynamic. It does not have to be marriage. It can be. It does not have to be. Four of Wands is relationship energy. It's my energy plus your energy means that we have some sort of containment. We have some idea of walls that constitutes you and I, i.e., relationship. So this is boyfriend-girlfriend. This is some sort of maybe more than friendships. It may be something more you have a history with this person, but you know you have some sort of emotionality that's meant to stand up for each other. You're both meant to support the weight of it. The Nine of Cups. Okay, this is emotional pleasure, some sort of emotional fulfillment that happens between you two when you actually do stand up for each other and you have some sort of definition. The High Priestess, I believe one of you is highly intuitive. Perhaps both of you are, but at least one of you is. The overview is the lovers. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Mm -hmm. Strong connection it is, and a complicated one at that. No doubt. That does not help people when I say that, but that also doesn't make it any less true. The lovers is a multi-layered bonding system. We have to bond on multiple levels with our person consistently in order to obtain them and keep them. Okay? It's not a just about, oh, I've never had such strong feelings like this before. Okay. Cool. We've never had such strong feelings like this before. We've never had such a strong connection like this before. What are we doing about it? Are we being consistent? Are we building each other up or are we tearing each other down? Are we kind of null and voiding this? You know, if it's going like this, then it has potential because you two are bonding at the appropriate levels. Okay? Which is the emotional, the sexual, the spiritual, all right, and the mental. So with those four elements, we're supposed to go like this. Sometimes, It depends on what's happening between the two people. It's not a simple love bond. You can have a simple love bond with your neighbor down the street. It's a little more complicated than that. It's asking you to rise, to accept it, to claim it, to do your part, to keep it. So the big thing with the lovers, in order to keep that kind of connectivity, you have to earn it, you have to be consistent with it, and you have to treat it with the respect of the connection or the weight of it, because it is a weight connection. It is weighted. It's heavy. It's not light as air, okay? It's meant to be much more than that. So I can already tell <laughs> that we have the frustration, the exhaustion. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what to do about it. You do know you want to be happy. Whether or not this person is included in your son anymore, I don't know. We shall see. And they have to make the decision to be part of that happiness. And it is a choice. They're telling me quite simply on the surface, Christina, I don't know what to do. When in fact, it's much deeper than that. What do they want from this connection? They're kind of treating it as, I don't know what to do right now. So they got a, some short-term game here, not the long-term game. Your energy suggests that it's exhausted more about the long-term output. Theirs is like, I don't know what to do with it right now. But what's shared between you two is some sort of relationship energy where you both fulfill each other's emotional energy in a way that's deeply personal to you both, okay? And it feels good. Light as a feather. I just not noticed that in this card. This is the Enchanted Dreamers. Yes, this is the Enchanted Dreamers tarot. I just noticed that for the first time. It's interesting. We typically don't see the Nine of Cups as the emotional banner that's usually reserved for the Ten so close. I don't know why I saw that. It's for the first time I saw a light as a feather. Feathers in this one. I don't normally see the Nine of Cups depicted like that, but it is wish fulfillment. That is true. The part where you both receive pleasure from it, that's the easiest part. Light as a feather. And I was telling you that 
the lover's connection truly has weight. You too can feel the light part, the feather part, where it's light and easy and pleasurable, but you too don't seem to know how to incorporate the weight. Now before you get all mad at me, I'm going to clarify. <laughs> Just hold on. Just keep that Aries in check. Christina, I, da, 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 da. Mm. I know what you can do. And I can that, see that you are exhausted by trying. And the question is, do you want to continue to try to fight the Nine of Wands? Let me give you my little spill about the Nine of Wands. Okay. It's really hard for me, doing what I've been doing as long as I have, to have sympathy with the Nine of Wands. Is it exhaustion? Mm-hmm. Can I feel it? Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. He's called the Wounded Warrior. It's hard for me to be sympathetic. Because we continue to fight that fight doing the same thing without different results. That's why he's the wounded warrior. It's a wounded warrior by choice. We continue to fight for something or prop something up that doesn't want to be propped up or can't be sustained, not by the efforts of one person, not by the intensity in the fight and the struggle of one person. So I can already tell I need you to take a look at your actions. Okay. And you tell me if this is something you want to continue to fight for. Because as far as they're concerned, they're living in the moment. What do I do right now? I don't think they're thinking of long term. I just need to know what I do right now in this connection. I'm not necessarily giving it my best feeling or my attention. The Knight of Swords can be very slapdash like that. It's like, what can I do to fix it now? That's all I want to know. What do I do right now, Christina? Yours is like, man, I've been trying to fight for this long term. I don't know if I want to keep doing it. I know I want to be happy. That's my long term goal. I just don't know if it includes this person anymore. And what's shared between you is a kind of mirroring effect, which is not surprising. You mirror your pleasure towards each other. You're both emotionally satisfied. That seems to be the easiest thing between you two. When you do harmonize, it feels right, right? That's the easiest thing by far. And one of you is highly intuitive. Let's start there with the lovers. Okay, that was your 10-minute baseline, okay? In other words, I don't know yet, and neither do you. <laughs> I don't know just yet. Tarot doesn't dictate action, you do however. Tarot is the proof of choice, not the absence of it. While I'm seeing things like past, present, and future, it doesn't take much to tweak the energy. It just depends on how much we abide by our own laws and principles. We're speaking up for ourselves, taking action. Do we abide by what we feel, what we know, a combination of those two? Ideally, side by side, yes, intelligence and intuition should live together. The lovers, show me the lovers, please. Show me the lovers, please. Show me the lovers, please. Show me the lovers. Show me the lovers. Gemini energy does not have to be. Other than that, uh, not too much else. But we'll see as we go along. Again, that's not exclusive. It's just about the energy. Show me the lovers, please. Show me the lovers, please. More of that back and forth. You're starting to wonder if perhaps it is such a strong connection. Because if it is, why is it so damn hard? The High Priestess, the Chariot, the Six of Swords. You're telling me that you are very much in love with this person. And that you are considering that you have to move on from it. Another part of you would like to go towards them in a way that's fluid. The opposite of this. The High Priestess, the Chariot, it's you. You're the High Priestess, you're the intuitive one here. You intuitively feel that this bond is very, very strong. You also intuitively feel your love space would like to move towards them. You're also telling me Six of Swords, I have to shift away from that feeling, or you're contemplating shifting away from that feeling. 
It doesn't matter how strong my feelings are, Christina. It doesn't matter how innately I feel compelled to go towards them. It doesn't matter how long I've loved this person or how strongly I've loved them. I might have to move away from them. For your part, and to your credit, you know exactly what your feelings are for this person. Very much so. You love them. Very much. You feel strongly bonded to them. Apologies. You feel strongly bonded to them. Hmm. Now you love them a great deal. You feel it intuitively, you don't deny it. Your heart space longs to go to their direction. But that Six of Swords is like, I'm starting to move away from it mentally. Maybe my emotions will catch up later. Your heart beats very strongly for this person. Fiercely. Proudly. In a way that says, I know this about myself, I'm not in denial about it. It's not the moon shit, Christina, it's not the Seven of Swords shit. I love them. I've loved them for a long time. I also feel mentally that maybe I have to start preparing myself to move away from that love. All right, let's do it. If uh, this is stuff that you don't want to hear today, don't stick around. Real terror effects for life. If you want the 10 minute messages that all is well and that they're a horrible person and that you're brilliant and that you're going to get a million dollars, I'm not that person. I'm not that person, honey. And uh, for my old school Aries, you know that. And that's why you're here. You value the work. And I have a very strong, proud Aries collective. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of my Aries Collective. You guys are one of my most strongest and most active. And I thank you for that. I am protective of all my collectives. So let's do be careful with the comments. I keep them open by graciousness. <laughs> Just let me tell you, there's some days I'm very tempted to shut comments down. Show me that Ten of Swords, please. Show me that... Ten of Swords. Oh yes, it takes a lot of work on my part to keep the comments clean, healthy, active, and scam free. So let me tell you, there's a lot of reason tarot readers turn them off. Sometimes people can be so fucking mean. Yeah. The Fool. Okay. You've been wondering for some time that it might be a cycle that needs to conclude. Okay. It might be a cycle that's time to conclude. Ten of Swords. Pain. Ending. Page of Pentacles. It's been a little idea with you that is growing. That it's time to close out the cycle so that you might open your energy up in a different direction. That's more like you. You've been feeling a call to happiness that is outside of this for some time. Which tells me, Christine, it doesn't matter. You've already told me that. How much I love them. Because you are. You love them. You know this. You feel it. Right here. There's the heart space. Intuition runs like this. Along your chakras. So not only are you in love with them, you feel it too. You don't deny it. But you've been wondering for some time if it's not time to close this cycle out. We're going to see the frustration here in a minute. I already see the pain. And it hurts you to think about closing the cycle. It does. Your spirit's asking you to open up and take a new adventure somewhere else, anywhere else. Show me that Nine of Wands, please. Show me the exhaustion. 
Show me the exhaustion, please. I don't know how long you've been fighting this fight, but your energy tells me you're kind of tired. And that's been going on for a long time. Nine of Wands, please. They might very well be your lover, honey. In the sense of spiritual connectivity, emotional connectivity, all that. But that doesn't mean we get to have them in our lifetime. Seven of Wands, Tired, Page of Cups, Nine of Swords, it stresses you out, honey. There's so much stress, there's so much strain. It's so cautious with your heart. You have a huge heart for this person. You do. You have a phenomenal amount of love for this person. It's absolutely pure. But the execution is shit. <clears throat> you, you're showing me the worst nines. The Nine of Wands, the Nine of Swords. The frustration, the anxiety. You're tired of thinking about it. And it's like, if I love this person so much, how come it hurts me so much? It's always in my head. My emotional expression, my ability to invest in this person is nothing. I'm guarded all the time. They're guarded all the time. The emotional communication is crap. They don't, they don't reveal anything of themselves to me. Yeah. They don't. Otherwise you wouldn't be reacting like this. And I have to admit their energy is very surface. And very much how can I deal with them in this moment, as opposed to long term. You obviously have made it clear they mean so much more to you than that. You don't want to be dealt with in the moment and you don't want to be juggled like baggage. That's why you've begun to invest, even if it's in the smallest of ways. of potentially moving your energy forward and outward. It's, it's the fool is a spiritual thing. <clears throat> He's right up there with the lovers. Um, honestly, given what I've done over the years for experience, I think a big chunk of terror is wrong. In one respect, I honestly believe the fool is more spiritual than the Hierophant. I really do. The complexity of the spiritual bond with the lovers will always be there. But if the Hierophant is our most spiritual representation of our higher selves, the Fool is our purest form. Because he's innocent. He's the Fool. The Hierophant has to plod along, think, 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 commit what's right, what's wrong. The Fool simply says, I want to exist. I want to be in the world. Which is why I do believe over time and through experience that this fool, the fool is more spiritual than the Hierophant ever could be. It is the purest form of, I need to live life. I need to move on. I need to open up. I need to be part of something. I need to be part of a journey. I need to be part of an adventure. I need to be part of life. And that's something that's really hard for the Hierophant to understand. Because he's bound by so many laws and limitations. And I'm using the Hierophant as an example because he's always deemed as the highest form of our spiritual selves. I kind of disagree over time. Your spiritual self has been begging you and calling you to move forward. You don't know if you can fight the fight anymore anyway. There's so much stress and strain in you. You're not getting the cup that you need. You feel defensive with your own cup. You're not in denial about your feelings for this person. You very much love them. I know what this is like. They love somebody that much and you can't connect with them at all. Not in the way that you want or that you need. The kind of shit that keeps you up at night. It makes you feel guarded. You can't say what you want, and you don't receive what you want. And yet, the connectivity 
is unfucking believable. It's a contradiction, I know. You think about it a great deal. I don't know if it's concluded yet, but I do believe you are taking small steps in uh, moving on. Not to be mean, not to be cruel, but because you don't want to exist up here anymore. Well, this should be the primary drive. But it's the least executed. This is some real world shit today, honey. Let's see your son and what you understand your son to be. <clears throat> Show me the sun, please. Show me the sun, please. So much can change energy. So much can change our output. But in this case, honey, it takes two people. It's yours and theirs. It usually does take two people. Seven of Cups, Four of Swords, Queen of Wands, that's better. You have kind of retreated. Heads up, you'll be connecting with that person relatively soon. It's looking like for some reasons a celebration, but uh, there is a possibility for healing with this person under some level of connectivity. It's a FYI, it's under energy, so it's not dominant. The three cups did catch my attention. Possibly in the time of Sagittarius, which is right after Scorpio. A celebration. <clears throat> but it's underlying, so it's not dominant energy. The sun, the happiness, seven of cups, four of swords, the queen of wands. As you kind of gone quiet, the four of swords is a lovely, quiet, contemplative, meditative state. And I think I've, I don't remember who I saw this for. You quietly feel much better when you contemplate your energy in a quiet space. What makes happiness to you? What does happiness look like to you? What does happiness feel like to you? And there you are, the Queen of Wands. You're still lovely. You're still very passionate. You're still a beautiful creature. Okay. And you're thinking about love in the greater scheme of things. And you're resting on it. What does love look like? I think love should make me feel like I'm living under the sun. In other words, happy. As opposed to not. And frustrated and disconnected from the person that we have such strong feelings for. And it's a quiet thing. It's an internal thing. It's unobtrusive. This is a quiet reflection on your part. As you give consideration to love and happiness and what it should look like, what it should feel like, and how it should make you feel natural. It's so funny, I just heard to feel like a natural woman. I feel like a natural, I want to feel like a natural woman. A woman in love. You might be a female Aries, you don't have to be. And if you are masculine, it could be that you are feeling your feminine energy in that respect of, I just want to be loved naturally and easily for myself. That's all I want. I want to be able to express myself fiery and passionate and not be apologetic for it. Someone to embrace me the way I am. That's what love is. That's what the sun is to you. That's the areas I'm looking at. And obviously, when you're in your quiet moments, you understand 
how love should make you feel versus what it is you're experiencing. I don't know that you're fully disconnected from this person. It's, as far as I can tell, still under contemplation. But it doesn't feel good. I do believe, however, you are in the smallest of ways. It's not really about leaving them behind so much as discovering yourself and where it is that you want to be versus where you are. This is what I am experiencing. Maybe I should be experiencing something else. And your full energy is trying to open up into the world to discover new things and other connections. Ones that are more accessible. Here. You know what's funny? Even though you're quite conflicted, agitated, mentally distraught, tired by this connection, being defensive, the emotional communication is crap between you two. I just don't see you being angry. I'm sure the anger's there. Don't get me wrong, you can't have that level of frustration and not have some anger attached to it. But it's more like, um, I'm more angry at myself for trying. Because that's personal. Nine of Wands, Nine of Swords, this is personal energy. Okay. It's more like you're mad at yourself. Because when you're calm and you're quiet, your energy is quite lovely, it's relaxed. It's relaxed, it's beautiful. Anyone would be a fool not to want that energy. Honey, when you understand that you're happy, your energy is relaxed, it's soft, it's sexy, it's beautiful, it's resplendent. Who wouldn't want that? And yet, this is what you get. You want to feel more like a natural woman. <laughs> and for those of you who are men, you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, I want to feel like that too. I want somebody to love my Aries hot energy too. I'm hot. I have passions, Christina. I like to go out and look good too. Okay, yeah, no, no disrespect. We all have masculine and feminine energies. I've been having to say this more and more lately. A lot more lately. Um, no, absolutely. To my Aries bros, I'm right there with you. It's a good feeling to let your hair down and just feel good about you. So when you're relaxed, you have very strong ideas of what happiness is. And you feel good, you look good, you take care of yourself. There's something in here I'm picking up. What is this? What is this? Some of you started doing your hair differently. I don't know what that is. It was such a small thing to you. But it made you feel good. You just... I don't know, your energy is trying... It, when it relaxes, it's actually quite beautiful. And it's very warm. Some of you are very into your hair. Hmm. Or you take good care of it, or you just recently vowed to take good care of it. Something like that. I don't know why I'm getting that. I'm just, I'm seeing somebody just... I'm, I'm going to do a better job. I don't know where that's coming from. I'm sorry that's so specific. Things just hit me. And for some of you it's confirmation, but you really associate your hair with your crown. I understand. I do that too. <clears throat> okay. Two of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords to so this person. It's contemplative, but it gives you a very strong contrast of where it is you want to be versus where you are with somebody. I do see you considering more and more opening yourself up to new adventures in love. But it's still very quiet and very calm, and just the idea of it makes you feel 
like you're going, like you're going a little bit. Because it's kind of like you remember that. It's like, who the hell wouldn't want this? It kind of comes across like that. It's like you remember that in your Four Swords. Who the hell wouldn't want this? Right? Yeah, I agree, honey. It's beautiful. Let's slide on over here. Show me this uh, Two of Pentacles, please. Show me all back and forth. Two of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords, the Two of Wands. I admit that's very surface. That's very, how can I deal with this now? And nobody wants to be made to feel like that. I don't need you to deal with me. Right? That's the antithesis of what we're... That's the opposite of that. The chariot, the high priestess, and the lover says, I'm not trying to deal with you. I'm trying to fucking love you. Aries isn't trying to deal with anybody. You want to love that person. Some of that two of pentacles, please. It takes two, honey. It takes two. And I can see where parts of you are angry with yourself. And you're picking on yourself a little bit. You're angry with yourself. You don't know what to do. You can't made a decision yet, but you know you're pulling in one direction. And when you find yourself pulling in the other direction in your quiet moments, it feels good to you. Show me that Two of Pentacles, please. Show me that Two of Pentacles, please. Show me that Two of Pentacles, please. Three of Cups. The Knight of Cups. The Hermit. They're, they're, they're resting on their laurels a little bit. <clears throat> they have emotion for you. It looks romantic. It does. But then the hermit, I keep saying the hermit, stop, stop, stop. And the hermit's meant to be a good guy. He's the healing, he's a healing card. He's the healing card, but he's not exactly known for being rushed. And with the two of pentacles there, they haven't made up their mind about their emotional expression towards you. They're overthinking it. Something that should be so easy. The Knight of Cups should be so easy. Romantic, self-expressive. A big thing of the Knight of Cups isn't about receiving it so much as expressing one, expressing themselves. This is, these are my sweet nothings to you. These are my romantic thoughts towards you. These are my, my private feelings towards you. And it's just a language that I want to share with you, right? Three Cups, serious contemplation about connecting with you, should they, what does it mean, they're overthinking it, the feelings are there, the feelings are extremely simple and easy, the way they should be. Knight of Cups, Three of Cups, you can't get more simple than that. So they have beautiful simplicity of connectivity with you, in terms of want. They want to connect with you more easily. They want to express themselves to you more easily. They want to be more romantic with you. But then it gets lost in confusion. Two of Pentacles. I don't know what to do and I don't know when to do it. Now's not the good time, my hermit. So they kind of block the natural fluidity that is their emotional expression. By insistence upon confusion. They say they need more time to think about it what to say to you, how to say it, when to meet, when not to meet. It's too much scheduling, there's too much juggling. Too much over-processing. Way too much over-processing over something that should be so phenomenally simple. I have a huge respect for the Hermit, I do. But all cards have pros and cons, like all signs do. His biggest con by far is over-contemplation. That's where I'm getting over-processed. Slap some Two of Pentacles on that, taking way too long to discover and deliver the simplest of functions. Way too over-processed. 
for something that should be Knight of Cups, Three of Cups, hey Aries, you want to get together? I'd love to see you. Let's have a drink, let's have a laugh, let's go listen to music. Let's go do something, anything, I don't care. Let's do it, let's go, let's do it, let's have a night out, you and me. And you have that special language. The sweet nothings, the looks, the gestures, the little memories here and there, as you swap cups. Overthinking, so much so that we conclude to do nothing. Now it's not a good time. I need to think about it some more. I need to figure out my feelings more. Their feelings are right here. There's nothing for them to figure out. They're insisting upon confusion and they're insisting upon delay. Knight of Swords. So here's the quality. This is the actual effort. Show me the Knights of Swords. Show me this person's Knights of Swords, please. Show me that Knights of Swords, please. Show me that Knights of Swords, please. It does feel very much over-processed, over-thought, instead of just allowing it to flow. No spontaneity, no last-minute engagement, um, no quick connectivity. It's over-thought, it's over-thought, it's over-thought. It's too much, I'll get back to it, I'll get back to it. And in so doing, it suppresses the natural feeling that's so simple and so sweet. Five of Swords, Five of Wands, the Hierophant, speaking of which, there he is. Heavy Earth Energy here, Virgo Taurus specifically, does not have to be. I've already, I'm seeing this as a direct reflection of your energy, of course, but also Cancer Gemini. Um, yeah, no, that's that's not good. That's not good. This, this person's higher self says that they, um, uh, it's good to have conflict. <laughs> I'm still trying to untangle that. Hold on. I'm still trying to untangle that. They're telling me it's 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 good to have conflict. It slows me down on purpose. It keeps me from rushing in there. It's like self-imposed conflict that runs contrary to what they actually want to do. And it slows them down on purpose and it gives them an excuse to delay and not gives themselves permission to take action in the way that they want. It is self-sabotage. In other words, they are over-processing subconsciously. In other words, they set themselves up for failure with you by intentionally delaying, insisting upon confusion, coming up with last minute bullshit changes and or reschedules, flimsy excuses, or they find reasons to justify minimizing their contact with you. Uh, I told, didn't I say schedule you in? Yeah, something like that. That way their time with you is always cut short, or it's slapdash, or it's sloppy. It's not depth. There's no depth or simplicity of real emotionality. Nothing is allowed to grow in the moment or express itself in the moment. It is a form of self-sabotage with this person. And here's what sex. They use the hair font energy to justify it. Like I said, all cards have cones, cons, and thus they have pros. As many pros as the hair font has, he thus has cons. If we can justify something through belief, no matter how much we self-sabotage ourselves, we're setting ourselves up for failure. If we can justify it with a belief, we have a reason to stick to it. This person has a reason to stick to their particular beliefs. It's in fact causing the tension between the two of you. They don't allow themselves to take action towards you in a way that's consistent, cohesive, or is in any way fluid. It is a form of self-sabotage, and thus the connection. This is why you're exhausted. You are reacting to them. If they don't want your love, I just wish they'd say it. Thing is that they do. That's why they don't say it. They do want your feelings. 
They don't want to own it. They don't want to own it within themselves, never mind with you. There's no way they're going to give you the benefit of their feeling if they can't give it to themselves first. This person is very much in denial about what they want, why they do things the way they do, and why they continue to do so. Because you, you have so much love, and here's the thing, honey. You are the opposite of denial. Does this look like someone who's in denial to you? I can see why you're angry with yourself. You're in love with this person, and you know it. But you're also telling yourself you have to move on. You're trying to prepare yourself to do that in small, miserable ways. Small, miserable ways you are trying to disengage your energy from this person. It's happening slowly, painfully. But you're also sick and tired of thinking about it. And you're angry with yourself. I was so guarded with the emotionality. I see why you're playing by this person's rules. You try to meet them where they are. And that's, and that's usually a good thing to do. We try to meet people where they are. But those laws of attraction only work if the other person's playing fair. They're not playing fair with themselves, never mind with you. So when you try to meet them where they are, with how little they give you, and you try to give them back some... It sucks because they want the pleasure of your energy but then they trick themselves out of it. They delay it, put it off. Say a little bit of fight, a little bit of resistance is good. Don't rush in there, take your time. You know, it's good, it's good. I can't commit to anything more than that. Or um, I also strongly believe that that's what's best. It's five swords, it's self-sabotage. They're, they're, they're destroying the connection and they don't see it. They don't see it. The Two of Wands, please. The question is why. I'd love to know why. Um, Cause like I said, who wouldn't want this? And that has occurred to you too. Who wouldn't want this? Honey, someone can't give you what they don't even know that they don't have, or they insist that they don't have. It's, um, you know this to some extent. You know it to some extent. It's one of the reasons why you're angry with yourself. The Two of Wands, Six of Pentacles, Ten of Swords, Six of Cups. Uh, well, there's some admission there to the bond. Well, that's nice. Um... They have that decision in them too, the Two of Wands, to balance up with you because out of respect to the connection of itself, Six of Cups, you two have known each other a long time. Memory shared, the nostalgia. With that comes the Ten of Swords. They seem to be recognizing the fact that the connection may not be balancing up for much longer. Um, they are showing a Ten of Swords, that's how you opened, and that's how they're kind of closing off with their energy. They recognize the fact that This connection's not balancing. They know it. They don't really want to look at why. They know why. To some way. You can't have actions like this that are slapdash, inconsiderate, unthoughtful, not planned. Honey, let me tell you something. And this is how I dealt with like my own particular situation. Okay, I'm going to tell this to you. This, you know, actions. That's it. If one person wants it, they demonstrate it. If two people want it, they demonstrate it together. Through your intensity, frustration, I know you wanted it. Okay, your efforts here, and it's exhausting to the point that you're angry with yourself. You've begun to invest separating from this person because your spirit energy wants to take off in another direction. 
the idea of it relaxes you immensely. It tells me, energetically, you put a lot into this. They cannot say the same. They cannot get in alignment with themselves, never mind with you. They tell themselves they don't want that much from you. Yes, they do. So they delay it, they stretch it out like taffy. Find excuses to not give it real quality. Knight of Swords comes rushing in. They say a little bit of conflict is good, stretching things out is good. I can't commit to much more than that. Besides, I have my own rules of justifications and beliefs anyway. And I have to stick to that. And what they're sticking to is killing this connection. The delays, the delays, the nonsense, the lies they tell themselves. I'm not trying to put it off on them, but honey, that energy is... It's very sad. And it's not claiming at all. It's not self-claiming at all. Again, they cannot give you what it is they themselves cannot come to terms with. They understand that the time between you two might be coming to an end. And Ten of Swords is there, that kind of balance that you two have had, Six of Pentacles plus the Six of Cups. It operates too much from a place of back and forth. And not enough of the emotional quality that should be coming along with it. Okay. They see that to some extent. And I do believe they're passively accepting it. Again, actions. If this person wanted to keep the connection and honor it, they'd find actions, not excuses. And you know all about that. If you want to do something, if you have a goal, you take actions, not excuses. This person has a lot of excuses. All right, let's see this shared. Wanna, uh, where am I? 50 minutes deep? There's, I'm not redoing this one, sorry. No. As much as it sucks, and it does suck, and I'm sorry about that. It is what it is, honey. It's, I'm saying it because some area somewhere is meant to as well. Show me the Four of Wands, please. Show me the Four of Wands. Show me the Four of Wands. Show me the Four of Wands. Show me the Four of Wands, please. Show me the Four of Wands. Your shared energy is that you both take pleasure from it to some extent. You are each other's wish fulfillment. And one of you, and I believe it's you. Oh, yeah. The intuition. I believe that's you. Show me this Four of Wands, please. Show me the Four of Wands. Show me that Four of Wands. Wheel of Fortune. Ten, ten of Swords, fuck me. Judgment. It was, it was, it, it, it's overdue. Whatever this is, it was, it was overdue. It was over a long time ago. It never really had a chance to take off. It never really had a chance to take off. I have at least one person here who is critically underdeveloped to understand the connection, what it means, and how it's meant for them. And you cannot work with someone who refuses to learn. They don't want to see the connection that way. Thus, it is not reflected that way in the reality. In order to fight, this person is not a fighter, honey. They fight themselves. They're not a fighter. In order to fight for a connection, you'd have to know it's yours. This person doesn't know it's theirs. They don't claim it. They don't acknowledge it. Not why. No. That as much as they deny it and block it and contrive it and manipulate it to fit their agenda, their time, their sense of urgency, how much attention they'll give it, there's no fucking way they understand what the connection is because they want to control it on their terms, but they don't know why they're doing it. It's 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 something that's the Wheel of Fortune, Ten of Swords, Judgment. It was it's it's probably been over some time ago. You've already reflected that in your opening. The Nine of Cups. Show me that Nine of Cups, please. 
the wish fulfillment, the pleasure, the pleasure taken in each other's company. That was the easiest thing by far. There was pleasure in this, and you both felt it to some extent. The Nine of Cups. The Knight of Cups. Ace of Cups. Ten of Cups. Jesus. Yeah. Here's what's ironic. Despite the fact that you have been so defensive and in your head about this and, and scared, I don't know if I can end this. It's been with me for so long. It has caused me so much confusion and so much pain. And I don't understand how somebody couldn't want this. I feel like I have a lot to offer. Right? The only thing I see that's consistent between you two that represents the lovers at all is your emotional bond. There's a lot of love here. There is a lot of love here. I see the Knight of Cups, the one that they try to control, block, and misconstrue and overprocess. And you feel it intuitively that there could be. You feel it intuitively, just like you feel like this is overdue for an ending. You also felt simultaneously, I mean, again, that was never a problem for you, was it, honey? Was that ever a problem for you? Nope. I called that from the very beginning of your overview. You knew you were in love with this person. You know you have strong feelings for them. You feel it intuitively and spiritually and so forth. And it's interesting because that's where you two are light as a feather, as I was saying. And your love here was for good intention. Your love for this person was made in good intent. I'm going to get back to that. High Priestess, show me the High Priestess, please. Which I do believe is you. Show me that High Priestess, please. And also, yes, I do see you moving your emotional energy forward. The High Priestess, please. Queen of Wands, the Empress, Six of Pentacles, you know, um, you just, you just know that you're worth more, in a very real sense, in a very real sense, innately, intuitively feel, you know, you're worth more than how this person lets you feel in the context of the connection. They're not treating you like a queen of wands. They're not treating you like an empress. Okay. You're worth a lot more. And you feel it intuitively. And that you need to do a better job of balancing with yourself. Instead of accepting the peanuts to a circus that you don't want to be in. You're going to go through a phase, by the way, of uh, active productivity. That's coming in very loud and very clear. You will soon, and you feel it intuitively too, that's another thing that's pulling you away from this. It's like the time is right to transition, uh, because you're about to go into a productive state. You're going to be earning more. That's another reason why it feels like a good time to transition. Um, it's looking like your productivity value is about to go up. That empress is attached to you with the Six of Pentacles. So some of you will be um, going through new job, job phases, career phases, earning potentials. And as I always say, in case you forgot, the Empress is the highest productive card in the deck. That's all she does is produce, produce, produce. So the Six of Pentacles is attached to the production value, which is attached to you as the Queen of Wands. And your intuition, intuitively, you feel anyway that this is probably the best time to transition out of whatever this is because your production value is about to go up.
you also know that you're worth more than this. You seem to be doing this on your own back. Now, the thing I need to explore this a little more. You opened up with being very clear about how strongly you feel. You're not just you don't just strongly feel for this person, honey. You are in love with them. You have been. You know that. You're not stupid. You know what your feelings are. I don't see a five of swords attached to you. No seven swords for you. No moon for you. You are not in denialsville at all. You've known it, and you sense yourself pulling away from it. There's why. This. I need to see this. Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups, Ace of Cups, the Knight of Cups. Show me this. Show me this. When you two are allowed to express your emotions, it's natural. This person in between those moments pulls back. In reality, they stretch shit out over time. And it's done on purpose. Whether they know it or not, it's done on purpose. It's like, well, some action's better than no action. <laughs> Besides, it's good to have some restraint, right? They're killing the connection with that thinking. It's good to have some restraint. I got it under control. It's good to have some tension. You know, and I can rush in there, fix it real quick, no problem. Very inauthentic. Very inauthentic. Show me all this love energy here. This Nine of Cups, Ten of Cups, Ace of Cups. Show me that, please. One more. <clears throat> Four swords, queen of swords. It goes back to when you rest. The seven of cups is here again with that four swords. Yes, I know you know. I know you know. Yeah, I know you know. Going back to this, Seven of Cups and the Four of Swords, when you rest and you contemplate, not only are you more natural, your Queen of Swords kicks in too. And says, I know we could have more. Intellectually, as the Queen of Swords, you know this. I know we could have more. If we could just, if they could just open up, because you're assigning them that Knight of Cups. If they would just open up, we could have so much more. I know. But you can't make anyone do anything. In order for them to claim the connection, they have to acknowledge that it's theirs to claim. You can't make anybody do anything. You're going to be tempted to sit there and if they would just, if they would just, honey, that thinking's not going to serve you. Like I said, you know who's worthwhile in your connections? The ones who act. When they say they're going to connect, they mean it. They don't just send you text and shit. They actually do stuff. And it's not slapdash in back of hand. Well, this is what I have to give. <laughs> Aries can take it or leave it. They stretch it out on purpose. It is a form of self-sabotage. You're telling me, again, in your private thoughts, I know what it could expand to. I know you know. They don't. For them to know, they can't be pulling five of swords and five of wands with the justification of the hair font to top it off like a cherry on a really shitty Sunday. You know. Somebody wants you, they take action. 
that's it. That's all. The bond you feel is real. You know it. They don't. Oh, they're so far in denial about it. So fucking passive. So passive. And they twist shit up in their head. Saying this is what's best. This is what's best. They don't know what's best. Because if they did know what was best. They turn around and embrace that shit for what it is. Claim it and be like that's mine. They don't know what's best. They think they do. That's the con of the Hierophant. Once he says something's true, he tends to believe it. That's the con. All have cons and pros. That's not this person's higher self talking. That's their bullshit talking. Then they justify it. I need you to get out of this energy. I can tell that the Aries Collective has been trying to push through something and push through something and push through something. And I know your energy tends to spike faster. It really does. But for some reason, I've been seeing the Aries Collective hang back a little bit longer than what I'm used to seeing for you. Typically, once you move forward, you move forward. So that makes me think you may not be Aries dominant. You might be other Aries placements. I don't know. But, um... The Emperor, that's you. Death, Scorpio, Judgment. Well, now, as I was about to say, some of you, like me, have some Scorpio in your chart. Just a little bit. <laughs> the Emperor, Death, Judgment. That's, that's, that's more like you. A lot more like you. That's, that's you. The Emperor makes declaratives. He doesn't put up with shit. He can be an asshole. Aries. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But he's asshole for a reason. That's his job. The Judgment. Kind of running out of hand space here, honey. Like I said, it's been over for a long time. But you're just now getting into that space where you can heed the call, make the judgment call, and end this thing. So if you have some scorpion in your chart, I suggest you use it. And I can see why it delayed your hand. You know what it could unfold to. But again, that takes two people. And honey, if they want you, let them claim it. You can't claim for two people. You just can't. And given as much spiritual energy that exists between you two, yes, you two were meant to build each other up. Yes, you two were meant to intertwine like this. But that's not what's happening. What are they waiting for? Next lifetime, I suppose. They have a lot of work to do. I do know this. They're gonna... In time, they're going to have regrets for the lies they told themselves, for the actions they did not take, for the things they had to insist, this is correct, this is correct, this is correct. Passive. I don't think this person wanted to step up into their destiny. They'd have to have a stronger sense of self in order to do that. 
I feel like this person doesn't do more than they absolutely have to. It just feels like that. Which is unfortunate. Because they are tied to you, then they were very fortunate indeed, but they just don't see it that way. They don't see it. They don't see it that way. And how somebody could love you this strongly and have so little to show for it means that they have been completely and utterly unaware of the very thing that was right here. So honey, if somebody is well and truly that ignorant, then maybe it is best to let them go. Advice, please. How would you advise Ari, aside from the obvious? How would you advise Aries, please? All I know is that you've had a lot of time to think about this. A lot. Four of Swords, twice for you, Seven of Cups. Your options. What does it feel like? What is Sun? What is happiness? What is obligation and duty? to myself, and FYI, I have to insist upon this, some of you are going to go through a high productivity period. Um, it's for your best, and it's one of the things that's going to help ease you out of this, is that uh, your energy is going to largely be going elsewhere relatively soon, but you already know that. The High Priestess is here. You know this, and so this is a good time for you to just kind of reinvest in yourself. Literally, reinvest in yourself. Uh, and congratulations on what looks like your value is peaking. I don't quite know how to put my finger on it, but your value has just gone up exponentially. So congratulations to you on your new venture. Perhaps you've recently had an increase, a raise, a promotion, I don't know. But uh, you're sitting pretty. <laughs> you're sitting real pretty. And it's like, again, it kills me. It's like this person could have been a part of that. You know? Damn. Advice. Queen of Cups. Three of Pentacles. King of Wands. Mm. You need to ask yourself if this is someone... If you are tempted to kind of put this person in the friendship bracket. Uh, which, again, I... S Who did I see that for? I want to say it was Cancer. They had a very similar combination, and I can promise you there's been many a shuffle between yours and Cancer's reading. It's like uh, you need to figure out if you as King of Quan, a uh, King of Quans, ah, as I say, the King and Queen. Hmm. So you have very strong feminine and masculine aspects. Then, anyway, you as the King of Wands can well and truly greet this connection as a friendship, and only as a friend and do so with a sincere heart space. I know you have sincere love energy for them. So if you're going to keep this person in your life as a friend, can you designate them that and only that and give them no further assignment because they can't live up to the assignment, honey. This is not the person who finishes their homework. Okay. And even when they did, they did it the night before. I don't know about you. Okay. When I was a kid, I got my homework done early, <laughs> in advance. You know why? Because I like to be fucking prepared. I know who I am as a person. This person doesn't do things so they absolutely have to, and even then it feels like pressure. So again, you need to figure out if that's the kind of connection that's worth keeping. They fucked themselves up for a multitude of reasons. They recognize the ending, and they're still accepting it passively. Like, well, that's a shame. So if you keep this person around as a friend, you have to have that strength of heart to carry it off as a friend. And that's it. It will take a strength of heart to keep this person around as a friend if uh, you have that kind of disappointment attached to them. Four of Cups. That's up to you. I kind of want to see... That's it. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. I think that's a perfect summary. What did I say? I 
don't know how this person can operate at such a self-deceptive level. I just, um, and I, I, I was wondering that. How can they operate from such a self-deceptive level? How can they stretch and pull their feelings out for you like taffy over cogs, over the wheel of fortune, over time? Stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out. Downplay it. It doesn't mean all that. Don't give them my full weight of attention. Make sure that they're scheduled in so that it can constantly keep busy and that there's always a sense of tension and strain. It's a satisfying enough for now and it doesn't mean anything to me anyway. That's what I vow to. It's what's in my best interest. And I was like, how the fuck... Can they separate themselves so intensely between who they are, what they feel, and what they're really thinking? I have never seen a mastery of it like this. And that's part of being passive and not going for what you want so you downplay your feelings so you don't have to be crushed by disappointment when you ultimately fail. And that's what that fuck it is. Okay? So when we don't have to be disappointed when we fail because we never allowed ourselves to have big feelings to begin with, right? So I can't be hurt. I can't be hurt what I do not uh, hurt by what I do not acknowledge, right? So they're passively looking at a potential ending with you and acting like, "Oh, well that's just that's just one of the many options." It could be. You know what I'm saying? This is self-sabotage. It's really bad. It's really bad. If I don't want too much, if I don't hope for too much, if I don't express too much feeling, I can't be hurt by it. And that's exactly what that is. The reason that they act like they could give a damn, that they could give or take this situation, is because they keep themselves numb. Eight of Cups, they keep themselves numb. And that's the fucking truth. They keep themselves numb. The Eight of Swords, man, the overthinking to the point of willful blindness, that Eight of Swords is always going to be willful blindness. When we are willfully blind to our own feelings, of course we're going to become numb. And that's the fucking truth. That's how they can separate so much of their identity with hopes, dreams, wants, and desires because they tell themselves if they, if they desired it, they could be hurt by it. So they don't go for it. They aim low. You know? That's what this person's challenge is. With the lovers, you're supposed to build each other up. That means you're natural challenges for each other. You're supposed to be a natural challenge. It's supposed to be. This person doesn't welcome challenge. Because if they're challenged, they might have to prove themselves. And if they prove themselves, what if they fail? So they keep the blinders on. When it comes to you, it allows them to stay emotionally numb over something so fucking exquisitely beautiful. Excuse my language. Who the fuck can be this numb to a queen of wands twice? Who's packing for them? The chariot, the lovers, the high priestess. Who the fuck can be that numb to something so exquisite and pure and beautiful? Oh. <laughs> and by the way, you're worth a lot. Congratulations to you, or you're about to be. It's, and you even know the emotionality could go into something so much bigger. But you've already come to terms with the fact that it won't. And it's like you're on a you're on a boat that's packed with jewels and fur <laughs> and beauty and painting and luxury and you're on that boat and you're like you want to get on the boat with me? Like that boat? No, fuck that boat. I like my little I like my little raft. I'm going to hang out on the raft. I'll look at your boat. I like looking at your boat. I'm not into that though. I'm not into that. This, this boat is good for me. This boat's good for me. You know, my little raft. It's not even a, it's not a boat, it's a raft actually. It's a dinghy. And it's got patches in it. And my laundry ain't been done for weeks. But you know what? I'm comfortable in my dinghy. Because if they stood up in that boat with you, with all the luxury of everything that you have to offer, beauty, unconditional love, possibly even some wealth here. They can't see themselves in that. Because then they might have to prove themselves, right? That they're worthy of it. That they can step up to it. That they can claim it. Like, no, nah, I can't claim that shit. I like my dinghy. I can rock a dinghy. And I'm sorry that that's how they think. They set themselves up for, they don't know that, honey. They don't know that. They don't know that. 
You can't have that much resistance. And let's make that clear. That's a lot of resistance. A lot. With the hair font signing off on that resistance? Oh, there's no fucking way. That's a lot of resistance to thyself. To what's good for me. This person insists that this method, how they approach you, is good for them. It's only tearing the connection apart. But they're like, yeah, no, that's, but I accept that. I know this person's ultimately how they keep themselves numb. It's quite the trick. It's quite the trick. I don't envy them that, though. I don't envy them that. One day their experiences will be cut in half and everything will taste tasteless. The music won't sound good anymore. The food won't taste as good over time. They're so used to shutting down anything that pleases them. Eventually everything will lose its taste. I don't envy this person this at all. I'm very sad for them. So yeah, don't, don't, don't call this person a friend unless you can mean it, because um, they're always going to be over there in their raft or their dinghy looking at your yacht. Looking at it, looking at it, wishing they had it, but never admit it. Not to themselves, not to you. I feel very sad for this person. To cut out so much of what we want and desire because we're afraid to fail. Reach for it or have to prove ourselves. And that is my point, honey, going back to the lover's connection, my dear. That's where you challenge them to want more for themselves to actually acknowledge it that they want more for themselves that they should want more for themselves <clears throat> so yes, don't call this person a friend unless you can mean it because you're always going to be over there inviting them or trying to invite them onto your boat and they're going to be like, nah, I, I like my raft. You know? It suits me. It suits me. I'm not talking about poverty, honey. I don't mean that. I don't mean that. It's, uh... This person's unwillingness to step into themselves. So to see how they are destroying the connection because ultimately they're trying to destroy the very thing they desire because they refuse to admit that they desire it or that they want it or that it's meant for them it's easier to reject than to receive for this person cycles completion case in point time of butterflies that is now healing yes inner child you need to transform that listen to your pluto energy Okay, again, more of that Scorpio energy, the transformation here, as in death, the inner child. Why do you long for this person? Why do you continue to try to reflect upon them all the love, innocent love, and pure love of a child, and the vulnerability of a child, and they don't reflect it back to you? I need you to think about that. That's some inner child shit, okay? Something that you have been dealing with since childhood, most likely, or they have. Um, somebody here, most likely the both of you, to some extent, as we do tend to reflect each other's wounds, more so when we are bonded like this. Uh, we tend to reflect, what am I missing? The person whom we're connected to, they represent that thing that we're missing. And it's kind of like, I have inner child, somebody's always looking for the other person's approval, and then the other person as a child was always told to aim low, don't try, don't exert yourself, accept bare minimum, and put out bare minimum effort. That's the way to go. Don't work too hard. Don't try too hard. The other person, which I believe is you, tries to show too much, okay, and tries to give too much because you do actually have quite a bit to offer, and that's the irony, and they don't see that. They don't see that because they don't see it in themselves, so that's what you two are supposed to learn, I do believe. You know? You want to seek this person's approval. You have nothing to prove. You have everything. And they don't want to see that and you can't make them. And they themselves need to learn to aspire to more, to want for more, to desire for more. That means putting in effort, real effort. 
transformation is needed for the both of you, but this cycle, as far as this connection is concerned, is complete. If you're able to transform it into a friendship and mean it, that's up to you. After that, I do not know. Hmm. Separation. Mm -hmm. For some of you, yes, absolutely. That's enough. Big heart, yes you do, I've already seen it. B. And again, they're a fool for not wanting it, but again, they've been taught and have learned to not reach high. B. Y. Dragon, Aries Leo Sag, that's you. The arrow of Sag, also Cupid's arrow, of course. The wilted tulip, I don't really need to explain that, do I? The, the romance is dead, the romance is dying. The, the, the wilted tulip kind of speaks for itself. It doesn't, uh, the smell has gone off the rose, yes? As I was describing with this person, the decline of their senses over time by constantly denying. Okay, a double dragon here, so you might both have some very strong Aries in your chart. Uh, the great white shark, Scorpio energy, here again, the child of vulnerability as hearkening back to that inner child and healing our wounds, and then also confirmation that one of you might have a child, goldfish, sign of Pisces, and then the hot air balloon, yes, getting up higher in the sky so you can look down, see what's actually going on, and the actual movements between two people and everything that's at play, I agree. I was hoping to get some more medallions here, please. Aquarius, Pisces, as I've said, Sag, some of you might have some strong Sag in your chart, that is the optimist. Sagittarius is the optimist, and I kind of see that for you when you're in your quiet reflection and you kind of remember who the hell you are and how much you have to offer and how much they're not accepting. Um, it's like, you know, fuck, it's driving me crazy. It's like this person is sitting at, down to a table. And they have the most glorious of feasts presented to them. And going back to that raft and yacht analogy, they're just like, well, that's a, that's a good looking spread. That looks like a mighty fine meal. I'm not going to touch any of it. I like to look at it, but I won't indulge. But you go ahead, you enjoy. No, 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 none of that's for me. I'm just going to, I'd rather starve. Why? Because I could get too much pleasure from it. I could get used to it, and then it could hurt me. I cannot dare to aspire to feast that well, or to celebrate too much, or feel too much. <sighs> yeah, that's enough. Okay. Cat, the intuition, yes, of course. And the Eiffel Tower. Some of you might have some very strong memories tied, and then also the height of the romantic notions that are built in reality. Yes, I see a lot of emotions here that you understood as hypothetical that could have expanded. You know this in your quiet thoughts. You have thought about it many times because you can feel it, you know. But the reality does not match the feeling. The Eiffel Tower is where the feeling and the reality match. Height of romantic notions, but grounded in reality. Yes, strong dream. Don't give up. I know that you have strong optimism in you. There's that feather energy again, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but I saw that back here, which I caught my attention immediately. The Nine of Cups the sense of pleasure, it's the lightest of touches, the lightest of touches, it's so light, and it feels like it could be so easy, it feels like it could be so easy to transition from a 9 to a 10, to have flowing cups, light as a touch, it would be so easy, a feathers confirmation for some of you as well, that's enough, uh, time checks, I don't know, it, everything seems to be happening now. I'm just going to go ahead and say now. For some of you, upwards to eight weeks. Also, the 8th of November might be important. I don't know why. Four weeks. Fourth, eighth, 12 weeks. No more. Correct. There will be a balancing period with this person relatively soon. Possibly. The 6th, 4th, 8th, as I've said. But I see you gravitating more towards your son. Most likely suspending this tension. Or not engaging in it. I see the transformation is happening now. Okay? That's enough for reals this time. Oh, God. Yeah, if you um have uh, strong Scorpio placements in your chart, you might want to check those out. Take that with some delicacy, however. That was... 
a rather intense reading, and it was very sad. But uh, there might be some overlapping elements in there for you as well. Bat, confirmation of the bats. Now is, of course, the time, as we are into that season, where Halloween and you'll be seeing bats left, right, and center, so that's hardly a confirmation symbol for some of you, but yes. The transformation, the dark night of the soul, becoming more acquainted with our uncomfortable thoughts, so we can tune in to what is correct for us. Um, yes, for some of you, bats is simply confirmation. You might see one soon, like a realistic one. Okay, that's enough. Aries, put in the comments as you see fit. I will check up on you, of course, in two weeks. I don't know what the gen the reading board will be at that time, but I do hope to see an improvement. At the very least, I would like to tune into a different group of Aries. I'm not trying to be dismissive of your story. It's just I feel like I have seen you've been warming up to an ending for the past month or so. Uh, and your energy moves a lot faster than anyone else in the Zodiac. So I really want to see you push through this. If there's anyone who can, it is you, which makes me think many of you are not Aries Sun Dominant. Um, that's okay, it's not a knock. You are where you are. But I would like to see improvement the next time I check in on you. I would like to see you transitioning more into that energy of I know who I am and I know what I'm about. And uh, I'm going to connect with somebody who actually wants that. Okay. Okay. Aries. Put in the comments as you see fit. And like always, I do hope you are well. I... I if this one does not resonate with you at all, very good. Check your other placements. Or hopefully, I'll tune into another group of Aries in a couple of weeks, okay? You guys, take care. Be well.